Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Lately I've been making a lot of art and doing a bunch of printmaking with random stuff that I found around the house. Today I'm doing this again and I want to show you how you can print the same plate in a few different ways. First things first, because this project includes intaglio printing, I needed to prepare my paper in advance. Paper needs to be damp for a printing intaglio style and I've made a whole separate video explaining why and showing a couple of different ways you can do this. Check out my channel or the link in the description to find it. After I'd prepared the paper, I needed to make a registration sheet for my prints. A registration sheet helps you plan out your project and print it consistently. My favourite registration method is a simple one where I trace around the paper and my matrix onto a piece of newsprint and I slip this registration sheet under a piece of acetate on my press bed. Even though I'm doing experimental prints today and I don't plan for them all to look the same, I still like to have a registration sheet so that everything goes a bit more smoothly and quickly. You can make your registration sheet as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Mine's a pretty simple one, but you can add as many notes or instructions to yourself on the sheet as you need. The idea behind this video is to show you how you can find interesting textures and ideas in places that you wouldn't normally think to look. A couple of years ago I bought a birthday cake, and after we ate it I realised that the cake board had this really pretty floral pattern all over the surface. I thought printing it might make an interesting project, so I cleaned it up and I added it to my pile of printing materials. I finally got around to printing it, so today I'm going to show you how I used it to make layered prints using relief, intaglio and mono printing methods. If you're not sure what the difference between those methods are, here's a quick rundown. Relief printing is where you roll ink onto the raised surface of a printing plate, and the ink from that raised surface transfers onto your paper or your fabric when you apply pressure. Relief printing is sometimes called block printing, and you might also hear it referred to as lino cut or wood cut, because they're the two most common materials to use when you're making a relief print. Intaglio printing is where you wipe the ink across the surface of your plate and then you use a piece of bunched up cloth to push that ink down into the grooves on the plate at the same time as wiping it off the raised surface areas. When you run your printing plate through an etching press at very high pressure, your damp paper is pushed into those grooves and it pulls the ink out and it's transferred onto the paper. Monoprinting is when you put ink or paint on a flat surface and transfer it to the paper. It's used a lot for looser and more painterly techniques, and it's generally less exact than other printing methods. In this project, I use one of my favourite mono printing techniques, which is to ink up my plate for either intaglio or relief printing, then dot some watercolour paint onto the surface with a brush. When you apply pressure to this, the watercolour paint kind of spreads out and mixes in really unexpected ways, leading to a different result each time. First up here I've inked up the cake board with my roller and some black relief printing ink and I added some watercolour to make a monoprint in the same pass. I'm printing on my etching press today which has been set with just enough pressure to print relief. If you don't have access to a printing press at home or in a community studio, you can print by hand with a baron or a spoon and I'll include a link in the description to another one of my videos showing how to do that. With my first pass here, I felt like I didn't have quite enough pressure on the plate, so after I ran it through the press I did a careful little check, and the impression was definitely too light, so I adjusted the pressure slightly by packing the press with some more sheets of newsprint. This upped the pressure just enough without needing to adjust the press, and I got a good impression on the second pass. You don't normally need to have damp paper to print relief style, but because I also planned to print intaglio on these same pieces, my paper was damp. I also find that when I'm doing this watercolour mono printing technique that the damp paper helps absorb and blend the watercolour a bit more effectively. 
I've used this watercolour monoprint technique a fair bit on my artwork in the past, so if you want to see some more examples of it, head to the website link in the description. A bunch of my older artwork using this technique is for sale in my online shop, along with some prints that you can see me making in this video. While we're at it, this also seems like a good time to thank all of you who've joined me on Patreon. Every little bit of support really does help me keep making these videos better. I've got a bunch of different reward levels on Patreon, including some where you can get an original digital artwork to download and print every month. I also have a whole lot of reproduction prints for sale in my Redbubble shop, and all of the links will be in the description of this video. If you're interested in finding out exactly what materials and tools I'm using to make my artwork here, I've included a list of everything in the description. You definitely don't need to use the same things that I'm using here to get good results, but I know it can be really helpful to see what different materials people use. One thing I'd recommend for making prints with an unusual source material like this one is to print with a good stiff relief ink. The patterned grooves on the cake board were very shallow, and if I'd used a looser ink here, there'd be more chance of it filling up in the very fine lines. Because my ink was very stiff, I was able to build it up gradually in layers with my roller to avoid over-inking the plate. I also experimented a bit with how I ran the plate through the press, occasionally stopping the press short so that only part of the plate printed fully, and also experimenting with ghost prints. A ghost print is where you reprint the plate without inking it up again first, so that just the residue of the ink left on the plate prints and you end up with a very faint impression. Playing around like this can be super fun and you can get some really interesting results. After I'd finished printing the plate relief style, I cleaned everything up and reset my pressed print intaglio. This is not really a method that's suitable for hand printing because it needs a lot of pressure, so you'll need some sort of press. If you don't have access to an etching press, you can make small intaglio prints on a press made from a pasta machine, and I'll include a link in the description to the video where I made one of these. I'll also include a link to my video of detailed instructions on how to set an etching press to print either intaglio or relief. To ink up your intaglio plate, you'll need an etching ink, something like an eraser or a small piece of cardboard to spread the ink across the plate, a piece of tarlatan cloth to help push the ink into the grooves and clean the surface of the plate, and some scrap paper to polish the ink off the surface. I also like to use disposable latex gloves when I'm inking up, as it can be a pretty messy process. The ink that I use for this print is a pretty stiff Charbonnel black ink, but you can use whatever brand of etching ink you like. The consistency of the ink will depend on the type of image that you're printing. Sometimes you'll need something looser and sometimes you'll need something that's a bit stiffer. It's good to plan a few experimental prints with a new plate to see what will work best for you on that day. And you can always add different modifiers to your ink to make it the right consistency.
When your plate is inked up and ready to print, you place it on the press bed and lay down your sheet of damp paper and the pressure from the roller pushes the damp paper into the grooves of your plate where it picks up the ink. If you try and print with dry paper, it won't be flexible enough to get into the grooves of the plate. The blankets on the press help transfer the pressure from the roller evenly across your plate. As I'm printing, I stack my prints to dry and flatten overnight. I do this by putting down a sheet of stiff compressed cardboard, putting a clean piece of newsprint on top of it, and then laying out the prints in a single layer as I finish them. When I fill up the space, I put another sheet of clean newsprint on top, then another piece of cardboard and another sheet of newsprint, and I keep repeating that until I'm done printing. When I'm done for the day, I put one final sheet of newsprint on top and weigh it down with whatever cardboard I've got left over and maybe some weights or some heavy books. And the next day, the prints will be dry and flat. And that's it. I hope you liked seeing me make art from a recycled cake board. I'd love to hear if you've ever used any unusual materials for making your artwork. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials I used today in the description. And you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.